What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today, in the world of indie games, we're checking out Knock on the Coffin Lid. Which apparently is kind of a card-based strategy RPG. Some people have said that it's kind of similar to Slay the Spire. But I've heard that it differentiates itself in a couple of important ways. So we're going to check that out today, see what those ways are, and dive deep down on into the gameplay for the first 30 minutes or so. So let's get started, and see if this is one of those games that you wanted to add to your wish list. Alright, so we get to knock on the coffin lid. We can play as either Vanitas or we can play as Percival. Alright, so Percival appears to have a big old midi gauntlet on top of his uh, coffin there, so I assume he's probably a melee guy. Vanitas seems to have been buried with a whole bunch of projectiles on top of it, so we'll start out with the melee guy, I guess. I don't know. Oh, is it too late? Did I already knock on the coffin lid? Oh, it's too late. We already knocked on the coffin lid. We're stuck with who we're stuck with, okay? Okay, there's a lot of stuff going on. That's a whole lot of icons. Looking down here, this appears to be the location where we have started. Or something. Actually, it's kind of hard to tell, in all honesty. Uh, we might have started right here. We might have started right here. It could go, like, either way from where I'm sitting right now. But, we'll go with this left one right here. Yeah, that sounds alright to me. Let's, uh, maybe... Oh, really? It lights up, like, the whole path? Curious. Actually, it looks like the arrows go from up here. Never mind. The arrows go from up here. All right, we'll start out right here. So there's a little brigand right here, and he's got himself a bowl cut. This is a robbery. Say goodbye to your life. I don't think that I will, man. Uh, we're both. Well, I'm shoeless, and you're not, so I'm definitely going to need to get those shoes, though. I don't know what that means. It says adaptive, but it also says that it does damage. So you know what? Let's do it. I I'm pretty sure we drew all block cards on this turn, and it appears to work pretty much the exact same way that Slay the Spire does. What does that do right there? Ends my turn? Alright. Well, he played defense. He's going to attack me for eight. It looks like we don't keep our... Yeah, I was a little bit worried that was going to happen. I was a little bit concerned that we were going to get all of our defense cards on last turn, which we absolutely did. And then on this turn, we get all offense cards right when he's about to smash me. Lovely dude. I love it. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. We're already, like, we're already playing badly, or at least getting bad draw on, like, our first hand. This guy has a lot of HP. I didn't realize how much HP he has. Can I just like hit the space bar or something? You have to click that every single time. I guess we could find out. I'm gonna test it out on this run. He's gonna deal some damage right there. Deal some damage, bro. Do some damage. Do what you gotta do. Yeah, space bar will retire your turn. Very nice, okay. So I don't have to move the mouse around anymore. I can just kind of play the cards that I wanna play. Give a coin, give a shirt, give anything. Nah, man. Absolutely not. Look how fancy my shirt is. You're not getting that. I don't have a coin, so you can't have that. So, like, really, you're sort of just out of options for things that you can pilfer from me. I like the animation. I really like the character design, too. It's a very, very pretty game. Whoever handled the artwork for it definitely applied themselves. It looks very, very stark, and it looks very unique. Like, the game stands out, even when compared to other similar games. Uh, I think we... Oh, we don't have enough to kill him. I'm so dumb. Oh, no. He had a shield. I'm an idiot. Damn it. See, this is why I'm bad at Slay the Spire. I just play too aggressively. This is why I continue to be awful at Slay the Spire. I am just too ridiculously aggressive when I play it. Yeah, dude. I'll take 21 gold. Sounds good to me. We get a reward. We've got Carnage. Ethereal deals 20 damage. We've got Breaking. Deals 6 damage. If there's vulnerability on the target, gives 10 to block. 
It's pretty good, and it stacks with the uh, two crush that we have right now. Effectively, this guy feels very, very similar to the to the warrior from Slay the Spire, actually. Some of the cards actually seem to be identical as well. Uh, I'll take the Ethereal 20 damage. What's not to love? Ethereal, more than likely, if this is the same as Slay the Spire, means that if you don't play it, it gets discarded for the rest of the combat. All right. He's going to deal six damage, huh? What's the difference between block and return? One is adaptive, the other is not. Okay, well, I'm going to deal 20 damage to you. Because 20 damage is life. It appears as though, due to something, we get an extra five armor at the end of every single turn. I don't really know where that's coming from. But I will factor that in from now on in order to make sure that we stay safe as we're running along. That 20 damage does seem to actually be a really good come up. I like cards like that. Big nuke cards that you get early on in the game are always useful, in my opinion. Like, they're, they're game changer cards. You know, like they... they oh, okay. What's happening here? Looks like we can actually click on these. So he's got anger. When taking damage, you will get block and strength. Increases damage dealt from all attacks based on strength. Okay. So he's getting strength every single time we deal damage to him. What do I have? At the end of the turn, gives you one point of block for every point of armor. In the case of health loss, one armor is removed. So it's basically the same as Slay the Spire as well. Lots of things kind of borrowed from Slay the Spire here. Although I am curious to see how the game adapts itself and becomes different. Because I think that's going to be the important thing here that's going to keep the game from getting filed into sort of the Slay the Spire clone drawer. Which is always, I think, the danger. Oh, this man got like, oof. Man got strength for days. We're going to have to figure out a way to end him. Carnage will do it. Bye. 20 more gold. Absolutely add that to the old coin purse. We've got dash. You gain 10 block, deal 10 damage. Not bad. Gives 10 block, reduces your strength, gives 10 block, and discards a random card. Okay. I am going to... Skip that one. Nothing there that I'm feeling especially psyched about. Yeah, we can go down this way. I guess we'll fight a pig. Man, look at the triceps on that piggy. That piggy didn't miss arm day. Let me tell you that. Oh, yeah, that's a little damage out. Is this guy getting strength as well from being angered? Incoming damage will give strength. Fantastic. Just what I wanted to deal with. Another spiraling enemy. Okay. So we probably don't want to use double strike on this guy. Vulnerability is probably a decent call. It looks like his buff is not permanent. The last guy has looked as though it was permanent. It looks like his is temporary. Like he's got a bellow or he's got to like do something to set that up. Yeah, there it is right there. Okay. He's going to deal 11 damage. All right. Well, let's get our shields up and running here. We'll deal a little bit of damage right there. I probably should. I think maybe like the two damage we just dealt was more than likely not worth giving him another, giving him another stack of strength. But who knows? Yeah, just take him out. I mean, we got a pretty good DPS turn right there, so why not? Uh, we also stole his wallet, so that was a really nice thing to do. We've got Growing Strike. Deals 9 damage, increased damage from strikes by 1. You know, so far I haven't seen a whole lot of cards that are not directly taken from Slay the Spire. And it's beginning to worry me. It's beginning to worry me ever so slightly. Uh, we've pretty much every card here that we've seen so far has kind of been from Slay the Spire. I'm going to need to see some new cards soon. Something that jumps out a little bit more and is like, hey, I'm not a card from Slay the Spire. I still don't know what this adaptive thing is. Uh, so let's see here. There are various upgrade options. Oh, that means when you upgrade that card, you can take it in multiple directions. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put that right there, and then we'll just smack this guy up for a minute. What does he have when playing two cards of the same type? He will get Fury. This will double his damage dealt weak. Hate everything about that, but here we go. We'll take it straight to the face. I probably should have read his ability cards first. Probably would have been a wise idea. Four damage out right there. Got a double strike right there. Oh, really? Double strike triggers it too. Interesting. 
Oh, attack. Gotcha. It doesn't have to do with, like, I thought it was talking about duplicates of the card. It's talking about actually the card classification. Makes sense. Uh, bye. I love big new cards. They are the best. They are the best. Agile block sounds pretty good. Gives two block, gives one card. Okay. Deals nine damage, allows you to move the card from discard. Yeah, that's the exact same as headbutt. Like, uh, let's see here. Agile block, though, sounds like the one that I want. I'm going to take that over everything else. I think we don't actually have many more options as to where we want to go. So let's just... Oh, there's two enemies right here. They're they're multiplying. And they've got, they've got stylish hipster tattoos. Okay. Well, I'll throw that out there. It's probably not going to save me too much, though, because they got a lot of damage going out on the front end of their turn. That's 14 damage in total. Yeah. We're definitely going to want to figure out what we want to do here. Let's say he's going to get Fury or something like that and deal double damage because, like, I can't really get around playing two of the same types of cards. Like, there's really no way to stop yourself from doing that. Like, some turns you're going to have to attack, some turns you're going to have to defend, you know? It just kind of is what it is. Wish I had more of an option, but at least we've managed to shut him down a little bit. We're still going to take a hit right there, and we're not really getting the full bonus from our armor anymore, which is a bummer. Wish that we were, but life is what life is sometimes. Uh, just keep laying into him right there. We've got like a really good opportunity at the moment to deal as much damage as possible while he's sitting there just kind of getting ready to ready his defense, and I think that sounds A-OK -okay to me. Couldn't decide if I was going to... I think I was going to take, like, five damage either way. But I didn't really look at it too hard. There's Carnage. And then we'll take that out. Yeah, it was a nasty fight, man. Those dwarves got some... Those dwarves got some dirty abilities. Deal eight damage to all enemies. That's really, really nice. Strength plus four on one attack. Burns out imposes on the enemy vulnerability. What does Burnout do? Can I not look at that? I'd like for these to be clickable right here. In any card-based game, I fully believe that every single thing that's highlighted should be clickable, and it should bring up a little window on the side that tells you what it does. That's one of those little features that was not like standard fare for a long time in, in video game card games, and yeah. frankly, I'm not willing to give it up. I like it. There's a lot of battles. We need to get something in between this here. Uh, so we've got Growing Strike. We've got Devil Strike. We've got Cleaving. Cleaving's nice. We can do Cleaving. Why not Cleave a little bit? Leave them Cloven. Hey, I'm about to do what I do right here. These guys, they kind of have like some pretty vicious damage. And if you can't settle it down, we're going to die on this turn, actually. They're going to deal 22 damage. Man, brutal. That's like crazy brutal. That's a rough one right there. You will come back over and over again until I get tired of your failure. Or until you do what you were destined for. Alright. Can we swap to the other character? I'd kind of like to rather play the other character if we could. Is that a possibility? Let's see if we can do that from... Yeah, just kill off my progress right there. And then we'll do a new game. Yes, I don't care if you delete my other guy. I wanted to try out this person. Oh, apparently Percival's the only one that's in the game right now. Okay, well, that's kind of a bummer. I wanted to try out the other character, but it kind of is what it is, I guess. Um, kind of an odd circumstance. I don't really know what to say right now, because most of the cards seem to be lifted one for one from Slay the Spire. I've played a lot I've played a lot of Slay the Spire. Enough of Slay the Spire to definitely recognize that some of the cards are just reskins and whatnot. And while I do really like the graphical style of this game, I find the graphical style of this game to be far superior to Slay the Spire. Um, just one for one copying the cards from another game, I don't think is gonna work for me. That's one of those things that I'm kinda like, eh. It makes me raise an eyebrow for a moment. Um, we're definitely gonna need to see some diversification along the way. Otherwise, I think that's gonna definitely kind of temper my, my expectations and my opinion of the game. We should be able to breeze through this guy like no problem. Let's wipe him out. It's kind of a bummer we still don't have a shoe on. 
And also, it's also a bummer that our big toe seems to kind of be fully bent on over and to the right. Like, I don't know if we died. Like, why were we in the coffin? Did we die of a big toe-related accident and or injury? Probably, there's probably a lawyer with a billboard for that. Have you been suffering from a big toe injury and or death? Then I can get you a settlement. Let's see. We'll go ahead and just kind of like lay into this guy as much as possible. Our armor, I think, is going to carry us all the way through. Bye. I'll see you later, Brigand. It's nice to know you and your rope belt. Farewell. Uh, agile block is what I want. Ooh, strength and agility plus one. Never mind, I'll take that. I like long-term buff build. Ew, what are those things? Those things are creepy looking. I don't like those at all. Don't like those much. What is that? Give strength to yourself and allies? Mm. Don't like that. I got a feeling that's going to snowball on me if I don't get on top of it like right now. Yeah, we can knock that out real quick. Throw that up real fast, too, because I didn't know how the strength was going to affect. Okay, I haven't been paying attention. The strength is apparently applied on the tooltip, not necessarily after. Uh, we've got enough to block all this. I'm going to go with that to get some strength and some agility. I assume that strength and agility are the same as strength and dexterity from Slay the Spire. I think that's probably a really, really... Given what we've seen from this game so far, I, I feel like that's a really safe assumption. Either way, the wolves are all dead. We've managed to vanquish them. Uh, let's see here. Agile block is really kind of what I wanted more than anything else. I, I like that card. Anything that gives me, like, hand variety and gives me draw power, boo. Well, you don't look like a spooky ghost. You just like a, you look like a guy that really likes undersized leather vests. Let's fix that for you. Like, is there something about you going to just, like, the J.C. Pennies or, like, the Ross or whatever? And you're just like, hey, man, let me get that undersized sweater vest. Let me rock it. Try to get as much damage off as possible while we're still here. I don't know what that does. Behavior change. With severe wounds, he will get a second wind. Okay. Well, let's play that real quick. We'll double strike him since we'll get a little bit of mileage out of that. And then we'll deal some more damage where we can, too. He's probably going to put up some defense right there. It's time for you to die. Actually, it appears to be about 2.59 in the afternoon. Now, that's the more literal time. In fact, as denoted by my watch right there, which apparently has an alarm set on it for whatever reason. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to be fine for that hit right there. We'll just put that in and then we'll hit him with a crush. Just to see if maybe we can get something stacked up here. I might be able to finish him. Kind of. We got close. We'll be able to soak the hit, if nothing else. And then on the next turn, we'll be able to seal the deal. Bow. Go to sleep. Farewell, little friend. I will see you on the next node. Another agile block right there. Burns two random status cards in the deck and gives two cards. Probably take another agile block. If I can find the means to start eliminating some of the little things from, hey, war is a dirty business and corpses are everywhere, and the marauders like vultures have flocked to the frontier to profit, I came across one such along the way. He wasn't embarrassed at all, but on the contrary, he called to me and asked me to help pull the boots off the corpse. Help him? I helped him with his work, and he shared the profit with me. It was very, very nice of him. Yeah, dude. I like $130. That's more than we're getting paid for killing dwarves and random naked guys wearing sweater vests in the middle of the forest anyways. I'll take it. That's all I got for you for right now. I got like a crush and I got a defense. Wish I had more, but I don't. No, you know. Kind of is what it is. Was crush a skill? I was going to say, I got a little nervous there for a second that, like, maybe I was going to trigger his double damage ability. And I'm trying to be careful about it because the double damage ability on these dwarves is what ended us last time. And yeah, give me that agile block. Give you one of those right there, too. How come the dual strike? It didn't trigger at that time. I think I just timed it wrong last time. I just wasn't paying attention to the cards that I was playing. I tend to get ahead of myself when I play games like this in the pursuit of aggressive damage.
Alright. Play that real quick. Not going to be able to bury him on this turn, but we can at least deal a little bit. We can get that stacked up on him so we deal more damage with whatever we draw on the next turn. Just the process of being proactive. He should be actually officially down. Let me see what card draws we got here. In advance, if the enemy intends to attack, gives three strength. Yeah, once again, that's another Slay the Spire card. It's a good card. Don't get me wrong, but it's a Slay the Spire card. I'm, I'm, I'm becoming a little bit worried about this game's reliance on just, like, one-for-one one copying cards from Slay the Spire. And, like, I get that Slay the Spire used a lot of the ideas, but at the end of the day... I haven't really seen anything other than the adaptive cards that is different from what Slay the Spire is putting out there. I'll play you, but two dwarves right now is probably a problem. They both have the same ability too, so I really just kind of have to be careful about the way that I play my hand. I can't play anything of two of the same type. And that strength ability is really going to get out of hand as time goes along. So there's a talent right there. I'm going to focus what I can on him, I think, along the way. But I think by the time I get him knocked out, this dude is going to be significantly buffed. And it's going to start becoming an issue. Play that. Kind of curious. He didn't trigger his ability right there, but I definitely played two skills on that turn. So actually, I'm a little bit confused about how this is going to work. It seems to work sometimes, and then other times it does not. So I've got to like watch what I'm doing here. It definitely works when I play two attacks. Let me get my agile block up here. Why can't I attack with that? He's disarmed me. Okay. Well, let's not make this any worse for ourselves than we have to. We'll kill him on the next turn, but his strength is getting to be considerable. Uh, so you die, please. Thank you. Yeah, this is where we're going to start to suffer a little bit. Luckily, I've got that extra armor right there that I'm getting from stuff, so we're not going to break anything. But if we don't get on top of this, it's going to get nasty. My strength is, however, growing pretty pretty magnificently. We're sitting at 7 strength right now. So we're outrunning him in the old Arnold bodybuilding race, so that's good. And let's go with the 8 block right there. Smack him with one of those. We'll just wait it out. He's got nothing to get through our block anyway, so I'd rather play it safe rather than risk the chance that he doubles his strength and makes my life more difficult. Now we can kill him off, so I don't really care if we trigger his ability. There's 27 gold right there. We did a really good job. Uh, Wrath deals 5 damage and duplicates itself in the discard pile, so that's the same as Anger from Slay the Spire. I'm going to take a breath, mix his discarded cards into the deck, and we'll give you one card. I actually think that's new right there, so that's not a bad card. Deals 9 damage, and you can enjoy it. Yeah, let's try... Well, actually... We've got a lot of defensive cards. We need more attack cards. So we're going to take that. We've got a mini boss right there and then a rest stop. I'd like to see... Oh, hey. Some thug blocked the bridge over the ravine with barrels full of gunpowder and sat on top of them. Clearly, for some reason, he needed to blow up this bridge and he did not wait until I passed it. It's interesting because I love the animation and I love the art style, but I'm kind of like... I'm kind of on the fence about... What's this going to do? Hold on. Let me look. At death, it deals a lot of damage to everyone on the battlefield. Okay, so we don't want that to break. What's he about to do right now? Activates the bomb. Bomb buff activation status five moves before explosion. Okay. Uh, let's maybe just think about dealing damage for right now. I I'd like to get him debuffed. So we got like five turns to knock this guy the hell out. Since we have a rest spot right after this, I think I might just take the damage and go full offense. Um, I think whatever damage he's going to deal with his wussy little club is not going to be nearly as bad. 
as what's going to happen if we don't get this bomb sorted out. Yeah, give me a little bit of block right there. Go for what damage I can. I actually don't think we're going to make it. I think we're going to end up taking that damage. That timeline's pretty tight. Yeah. So I can't kill it or it explodes, as I understand it. But it also explodes like every five turns. We'll have to see what happens. It sounds like this is kind of like a storyline event, I guess. Uh, go... Go all in on him where you can, I guess. Didn't it say it was going to deal 37 damage? How come it killed me? Interesting. Well, my name is Splattercat. This is Knock on the Coffin Lid. Uh, so like I said, this is one of those games that I'm actually feeling kind of interested in. On one hand, most of the cards for the character that's available seem to be directly pulled from Slay the Spire and renamed. But on the other hand, the game's art style is very, very striking and in fact has a lot of effort and care put inside of it. And so I, I wanted to see how the game was going to differentiate itself, and I guess it does that for now through the enemies. Uh, the enemies all seem to behave very, very differently from the enemies that we've seen in Slay the Spire. However, the deck and the cards themselves for Percival, the character we're playing, seem to mostly be Slay the Spire cards. I think there's been one or two that I've seen that were not Slay the Spire cards, but by and large, most of them are kind of just renamed and uh, recolored cards from Slay the Spire. So anyways, time will tell. Uh, this game's in development right now. It's got more characters that are going to be coming out. We'll see how they do. I mean, maybe it's just kind of Percival is sort of a homage, or I don't know, honestly. I, I prefer to give people the benefit of the doubt on a lot of this stuff, and I really love the art style, so it's clear that they're putting care on into the game, but I do think that they're going to have to diversify Percival as a character a little bit. Um, before people are going to start making that Slay the Spire comparison. I think that's going to be the first thing that comes to mind. It's just the cards are so similar. Like, they do the exact same things, you know? So anyways, I will see you all next time. Thank you for being here. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about it in the comments if you agree with me or if you think I'm being a little bit too harsh. Either way, everything's fine. I will see you with something tomorrow, hot and fresh off the indie skillet, because after all, that's what we do here at the Nerd Castle. We sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. And I will see you with that hot and fresh content tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody.